Hello everyone. A very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to welcome to today's session. So today we are going into another chapter of uh, UPSC CSAT Quantitative Aptitude Series. Okay, so uh, hopefully we will be able to finish the whole one series in a week, and the CSAT classes will be done by that. English uh, sections you can handle yourself. Okay, I'm just taking the quantitative aptitude part. Uh, logical reasoning is also very important, but that is all based on you know some diagrams and you know similar things. So not such a huge thing. Most of you get it very well. This is one area. Quantitative aptitude is one area which most of the aspirants find it very difficult. That's why I specifically took this. Okay, based on the request of some of you, quant is quant is one kind of area that needed help at least for some of you so that's why i started this series and we are into the lecture 19 and today we are going into look at a chapter known as clock and calendar okay yeah spelling mistakes straight away calendar all right sorry for that anyway let's begin today's session uh, again a very short session we will be doing 10 questions regarding clocks and calendar First of all, understand that the questions that usually come from these topics are very simple. Okay, very simple, absolutely simple. You could uh, find the answer in like five seconds. Okay, such bare minimum questions are asked. I mean, uh, one or two questions will be there anyway. This year also in CSAT 2021, there were questions on clocks as well as on calendars. So questions are there, but uh, finding the answer is very, very simple. For example, today's uh, this year's uh, question based on calendar was, if October, uh, uh, sorry, what was the uh, day of October 7, 2027? Okay, which day of the week is it? October 7, uh, sorry, October 10th, 2027. Okay, uh, the reason why they asked it was the UPSC exam of uh, the prelims exam was on October 10th, uh, 2021. Okay, the date was October 10th. So if October 10th, 2021 was a Sunday, then October 10th, 2027 is what day of the week? Got it. So such questions are, you know, the ones that we see mostly to find out the day of the week. And uh, we will be doing some questions in that area and some questions on clocks also, especially based on the degree found by the hour and minute hand. Okay, this year's question was also regarding that. What's the degree between hour and minute hand when the time is so and so? Okay, very simple questions, very direct questions. But we will be doing, you know, some difficult questions also today, just so that you, uh, we can cover the entire thing. Okay, even if UPSC decides to ask a very difficult question next time, you should be able to do that. Correct. So we will do a couple of difficult questions also today. But other than that, this is a very, very simple session. Okay. So first of all, calendars. Starting with this topic, calendars. Before moving on to the problems, you have to understand some very basic concepts regarding calendars and dates. Okay. So, first concept you have to understand is regarding odd days. What exactly is an odd day? In a given period, the number of days more than the complete weeks are called odd days. Okay. So, for example, I am saying 10 days. Okay, 10 days means what? One full week, that is seven days, plus three days. Correct? So the number of odd days in 10 days is actually three. Got it. Say if I, day, uh, if I say 16 days, 16 days means what? Two weeks and two days. Correct? So the number of odd days here is two days. So take out the maximum amount of weeks possible, uh, no, the whole weeks out of it and whatever is the remaining number of days that is the number of odd days clear so number of odd days can be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 it cannot be 7 because when it, when it is 7 it is a new week which basically means the number of odd days is 0 all right so that is a concept of odd days very this this concept is very important because most of the questions that we do is actually based on this clear now, what exactly is a leap year? Another very sim uh, similar, no, familiar term, leap year. Every year that is divisible by four. If it is not a century, it is a leap year. Okay, so say the year 2004 is a leap year, the year 
say 1996 is a leap year, 2008 is a leap year, 2020 is a leap year. Okay, any year, perfectly divisible by 4, as long as it is not a century, it is leap year. Is 2100 a leap year? No. 2100 is not a leap year. Is 2200 a leap year? It is divisible by 4, correct? But still it is not a leap year. 2300? No. Got it. So centuries are not leap years. Any other year that is divisible by 4 is a leap year. But there is a slight exception. Every fourth century is a leap year. Okay. So 2100 is not a leap year. 2200 is not a leap year. 2300 is not a leap year. But 2400 is a leap year. Got it. Similarly, 2500, no. 2600, no. 2700, again, no. 2800, yes. So every fourth century is a leap year. Got it. Otherwise, centuries are also not leap years. Please be very careful with that. Keep that in mind. Okay. So shall we move on to some more concepts? How to find out the number of odd days in different time periods? Okay, counting the number of odd days. This is the base with which we do everything else. Okay, but before that, let me just adjust it so that you can clearly see what is written. One second. Okay. All right. So, one ordinary year, okay, a, a usual year. How many days are there in a year? 365 days, correct? So, how many weeks can we take it completely? 365 divided by 7. Okay, so let's do that. 365 divided by 7. 5 7 sir, 35. Remaining 1 and 15. 2 7 sir, 14. Remaining 1 day. Okay, so we have 52 whole weeks and one day. Correct. So, number of odd days in one ordinary year is one. Okay. One ordinary year has one odd day. What about leap year? Leap year has 366 days, which means 52 weeks plus two days. So, one leap year, sorry, one leap year has two odd days. Understood? One ordinary year has one odd day. One leap year has two odd day. What about 100 years? What if I say try for 100 years? 100 years actually has 76 ordinary years and 24 leap years. Okay, divided by 4 and you can understand that. No, 4, 6, 8, 10, uh, sorry, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, all these are leap years. Okay, all the way up to 96. So you will have 24 leap years and whatever is remaining, 100 minus 24, that is 76 ordinary years. Okay, each ordinary year has one odd day. So that is 76 into 1 plus each leap year has two odd days. So 24 into 2. So 76 into 1 plus 24 into 2 will give you 124 odd days in 100 years. But again, this is not correct because we can take in, skim in some more weeks from 124 days, correct? So 124 days equal to 17 weeks and 5 days, which means there are 5 odd days in 100 years. Understood? In 100 years, there are 5 odd days. Similarly, in 200 years, how many? 5 into 2, 10, correct? But in 10, we can take one week. So after taking that seven days off, then what is remaining three? So three odd days. In 300 years, in every 100 years, it is five. So in 300 years, it is five into three. That is 15 days. But in 15 days, we can take two complete weeks, 14, remaining one. So one odd day. In 400 years, five into four, say total 20, uh, 20 uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, 20 odd days. Okay, but in that case, the number of uh, what odd day is zero. So be why? Because it's I, as I have mentioned earlier, every fourth century is a leap year. Here it is not five into four. I am sorry for that. 
it is actually 5 into 3 5 into 3 that is 15 plus a leap year the last one so in a leap uh, in the the la 400th century okay so that will constitute what plus how many days in a leap year any idea plus 5 into 3 is 15 so one more 21 21 odd days Okay, so three complete weeks, therefore zero or days. All right, so every 400 years we have zero or days. Until then, the number of you know the days will go as you know five three one again zero five three one zero five three one zero. That is how it goes every century, number of odd days. Okay, so after finding out the odd days. How would you find the day of the week? If the number of odd days is zero, then the day of the week is Sunday. If it is one, it is Monday. If it is two, it is Tuesday. Three, Wednesday, four, Thursday, five, uh, Friday and six, Saturday. Okay, find the number of odd days and whatever that is, you can pick the day from this table. Using this concept, let's try out uh, some questions. Okay. There are some issues, I know, uh, I hope I didn't mess it up too much. Okay, this was real. This was wrong. It is not 5 into 4 as such. It is 5 into 3 plus 6. We have to factor in for that 400th year, which is a leap year. So the number of odd days there will be plus 1. That is why 5 into 3 plus 6, that is 21. That is 0 odd days. Okay, anyway, let's continue. What was the day of the week in 16th of July? 1776 okay 16th of july 1776 what was the day of the week any idea how do we do this first of all in order to do this you have to have very good understanding about everything that i have talked so far all right so one seven seven six years is equal to 1600 years plus 100 years Correct. Plus 75 years plus all the way from Jan 1 of uh, 1776 to 16th July 1776. Correct. Can we write 17, uh, 16th of July 1776 like this? 1600 years plus 100 year plus 75 year then that portion within one, uh, 1776 that is from jan 1st to 16th of july correct now what we have to do is go back to that table that we did and uh, check it out 1600 years first of all we can start with this what is the number of odd days in 1600 years What is the answer? I wrote here, number of odd days in 400 years is zero. Correct? So every multiple of 400. So basically 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000. In all these cases, number of odd days is zero. Understood? That is why we took it as, we split 1776 based on 1600 plus etc. etc. Because we can completely put the number of odd days as zero. Got it? So, number of odd days in 1600 years is 0. Clear? Now, number of odd days in 100 years is equal to how much? We already studied that. 100 years, number of odd days is 5. Correct? So, it is 5 odd days. Now, in 75 years, we can again split 75. Okay, 75 years is equal to 18 leap years plus uh, 57 ordinary years. I already solved this, okay. I have already got a copy which I have solved this uh, to avoid too much time, you know, based on calculations and all. Okay, so 18, year, 18 leap years equal to 
sorry, 75 years is equal to 18 leap years plus 57 ordinary years. How did I get this? We simply divide 75 by 4. I will uh, show you one example. 75 divided by 4. 1 4 are 4. 35. 8 4 are 32. Remaining 3. Okay, it doesn't go. So there are 18 leap years. And 75 minus 18, 57. 57 ordinary years. Understood how I got that? Now, So, in one leap year, how many odd days are there? In one leap year, the number of odd days is equal to 2. And in one ordinary year, number of odd days is equal to 1. Correct? So, 18 leap years means what? 18 into 2 odd days plus 57 into 1 odd day. And this is equal to how much? 36 plus 57. That would give you 93 odd days. Okay, so we have completed up to this portion now. Now from Jan 1st, 1776 to 16th of July, 1776. We have to consider that period and find out the number of odd days there also. Let's write down January, February, March, April, May, June, July. January, how many days? 31. 1776, is that a leap year? Yes. Okay, therefore February has 29 days. March has 31. April 30. May 31. June 30. July, how many days? 16th of July. So, 16 days. Add all these days together. And you will get how many 198 days okay now num here number of odd days equal to what number of odd days is equal to how much 198 days is equal to actually it is 28 weeks and two days okay so number of odd days is equal to how many two Understood. Here, 75 years, we already did this as 93 odd days. We have to convert this also. We have to find the number of odd days here also. So, 93 days is equal to 13 weeks plus 2 days. 2 odd days. Okay. So, implies 2 odd days. Clear. So, what is the total number of odd days? What are the odd days? I will just use another color for uh, identifying it. The odd days are 0, 5, okay, 0, 4, 1600 years, 5, 400 years, 2 odd days, 4, 75 years, and from Jan 1st to 16th of July, 1776, we have 2 odd days, correct? So, total number of odd days, is equal to 0 plus 5 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 9, correct, is equal to 1 week and 2 odd days, correct, so this is equal to 2 odd day, okay, so if the number of odd days are 2, then what is the day of the week, according to this table, the answer is Tuesday, correct, if the number of odd days is equal to 2, then that day of the week is Tuesday. Did you understand how to do this question? First of all, when you get a date, try to take out the maximum you know, uh, uh, amount of year in which the odd days are zero. Okay, so here in this case, it is 1776. So we can take 1600 years out because the number of odd days is zero. For all, uh, you know, the fourth century, the number of odd days becomes 0, 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000 for all, for all these years. So, so up to 1600, number of odd days is 0, gone. Then what is remaining? 176 years and some days. So from that we took 100 years first. We know that in one century there are 5 odd days. 
So we wrote that down. Then what is remaining? 75 years and then you know, some months. So we found out the number of odd days in 75 years. We wrote that down. And then we took the remaining extra days. We found out the odd days there. We wrote that down. In the end, we added all the odd days together and we got nine odd days. Nine odd days means we can here also we can take one week and whatever is remaining that is the number of odd day that is two correct and if the number of odd days are two the corresponding day of the week will always be tuesday got it this is how you do these kinds of questions i know this was a bit lengthy slightly confusing but the more you do it the easier you it will get let's try another one easy question january 1 2007 was a monday what day of the week lies on january 1 2008 Okay, this, uh, this is the kind of question that UPSC usually asks. Very simple. I will show, I will tell you a secret or uh, uh, a quick step to find the answer. Okay, don't do all these things. Okay, the things that we just did, not necessary. In these kinds of questions where, you know, a day is given for a particular date and you are asked to find out the day in the next year or something like that, there is a quicker method. This is how it works. Okay, if... I'm, uh, this is a simple example okay so what is the date today december 17th correct so if this if 17th of december 2021 is a friday okay then 17th of december 2022 is a saturday okay so then 17th of December 2023 is a Sunday. Got it? So the same date every next year will be one day ahead. Got it? So 17th of December uh, today is a Friday. So next year 17th of December will be Saturday. The next year it will be Sunday. It goes on like that. Except in case of leap years, that is if the date comes after February 29th, then you have to add one extra day. So 2021, 22, 23, all these are not leap years. But 17th of December, 2024, 24 is a leap year. 2024 is a leap year. Therefore, it won't be Monday, it will be Tuesday. Jump one more day. If the date comes after February 29th. Okay, here it is 17th December. So that comes after February 29th. So jump one extra day. Then again, 17th of December, 2025 will be what day? The immediate day, Wednesday, 17th of uh, 2026 will be Thursday, 17th December of 2027 will be Friday, okay, 17th of December 2028 will be, 28 is a leap year and the date comes after February 29, so jump one more day, so Friday, Saturday gone, Sunday. Did you understand how this works? So based on this principle, think about this question. January 1, 2007 was a Monday. 2007 is not a leap year because it is old. So never a leap year. One day of the week lies on January 1st, 2008. 2008 is a leap year. Okay. But January 1 comes before February 29th. Correct. So how many days we have to jump? Just one day. Correct? So if January 1, 2007 was a Monday, then January 1, 2008 will be Tuesday. Did you understand? All you have to check is whether it is a leap year or not. If it is a leap year and if the date comes after February 29, then you have to jump one day, one extra day. You have to skip a day and go to the next one. Otherwise, just go to the next day. That's it. If it is Monday, then it is next, next is Tuesday. That's all. If the date is after February 29th, you have to skip Tuesday and go for Wednesday. Got it. That is how you do this question. So a person who knows this concept, how much time would he or she take to do this question? Two seconds maximum. Correct. Very simple question. Let's try another one. What was the day of the week on 15th of August 1947? So this one we do in the first method okay the, the method that we studied earlier 
August 15, 1947. Okay, our Independence Day. What was what day was it? Any idea? Have anyone been curious enough to find that out? Even without uh, you know mathematically doing it. Okay, if you don't know, we are about to find out what day it was. Let's do it. Okay, one second. Any questions, any doubts? No. Okay. So if you feel free to ask any questions if you want. Now, what was the day of the week of 15th of August 1947? How do we do this? So 15th August 1947. Okay, is equal to how would we take the number of years here in this case? Again, what is the closest you know fourth century we can take? Completely take 1600, correct? Because after 1600, it is 2000. The given date is only 1947. So 2000 is beyond that. So we have to take the immediate lower one. So 1600 plus 300 plus 47, no 46 plus 1st Jan 1947 to 15th August 1947. Correct. This is how we split this. Okay. 1600 taken together, 300 taken, 46 taken. Then in that 47th year from Jan 1st to 15th of August. Okay. Now, number of odd days. Uh, in 1600 years is equal to zero. Number of odd days in 300 years. What is the number of odd days in 300 years? Do you remember? Let's try to remember that. Otherwise, even otherwise, you can find out. You, we know that in one ordinary year, it is one day. In 100 years, it is uh, five days. So 300 years, it is actually five into three, 15. So it should be 15 odd days, but we can take two weeks there. So remaining one. So number of odd days in 300 years is equal to one. Okay, so one. Now, what is remaining? 46 years. Number of odd days in 46 years. We do not know that. 46 is equal to how many leap years and how many ordinary years? How many leap years are there in 46 years? 11 leap years. Correct? 11 into 4, 44. So 11 leap years plus 46 minus 11, 35 ordinary years. Correct. So 11 leap years, in one leap year, there are two odd days. So 11 leap years, 11 into two odd days. Plus in one ordinary year, there is only one odd day. So 35 into one. So 22 plus 35 is equal to 57 odd days. Correct. But we can take some weeks from 57 days. How many weeks can we take completely? 57 divided by 7 will give you 58 into 7 are 56. Then one extra day. So that is 8 weeks plus 1 day. Okay, so the number of odd days is 1. In 46 years, you have uh, 1 odd day. Clear? Now, we have finished this, we have finished this, we have finished this. Now, from 1st January 1947 to 15th August 1947. Let's do it. January, February. March, April, uh, May, June, uh, July, August. Okay, so January 31 days. February 1947 is not a leap year. It is an odd year, so definitely not a leap year. Uh, so 28 days. March, April, May, June, July, August. Okay, so uh, August, but we do not have to take 31. Why? We have to uh, look for the date 15th of August 1947. Correct. So we do not have to take uh, 31. We have, we only need 15. Okay. So add all these days together. When you add all these, you would get how many, how much days? 227 days. Okay, so how many odd days are there in 227 days divided by 7? 
227 divided by 7. 3 7 are 21, 17, 2 7 are 14, remaining 3. So this is equal to 3 odd days. All right. So what are the total number of odd days? Total number of odd days is equal to, let me use another color. Okay. 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3. Correct. So 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 5 odd days. Clear? So if there are 5 odd days, then what is the weekday? Go back and look into the chart. There are 5, if there are 5 odd days, then the weekday is Friday. Okay. So implies it is a Friday. It was a Friday. Okay. Let's get our grammar correct. Okay. So this is how you find out. You can find out the day of a, you know, any day in history using this technique. Any day you want. That, uh, you know, uh, when you get time, try doing this for your birthday. Okay. If you are born in this particular date, use this method to find out which day it was. Okay. I think you already know in which day you were born. But still, using this method, try to see if you can get the correct answer. Okay. So, let's try another question. The calendar of the year 2007 will be same for the year dash. Another common type of question. The 2007 calendar will be same for the year which one? 2014, 16, 17, 18. That is the question. Do you know how to check this? In order to find out which two calendars are the same, all we have to do is count for the odd days. Okay. Fra start from 2007 and count the number of odd days. Whenever the number of odd days becomes zero, then that calendar and this calendar will be the same. Okay. Suppose, suppose, not sure. Suppose if it is 2016, I don't know the answer, but let it, I'm assuming if it is 2016, then starting with 2007, if you, you know, count the number of odd days for 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and finally 16, it will add up to 0. If it adds up to 0, then 2016 calendar is equal to the 2007 calendar. Understood? So basically, you have to find out the number of odd days and add it until it becomes 0. Let's do this. Okay. So... 2007 is the first year. So let's start with that. 2007. Okay. And the last year is 2018. So we have to write all the way to the prep year before 2017. So 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Now, What is the number of odd day in 2007? 2007 is an ordinary year. Correct? So the number of odd day is 1. Correct? 2008 is a leap year. So number of odd days is 2. 1 plus 2, 3. Okay. So no. 2009, ordinary year. So number of odd day 1. 2010, ordinary year number of odd day one so one plus two three plus one four plus one five still it is not rounded to zero 2011 ordinary year number of odd day one so one plus two three plus one four plus one five plus one six okay so still we have to continue 2012 it is a leap year so number of odd days is two correct so one plus two three plus one four plus one five plus one six plus two eight which means we have seven days gone and one extra day so still it is not rounded to zero. Correct? If 2012 was an ordinary year, then yes, the 2013 calendar will be same as that of 2007 calendar. But it is not the case. So we continue. 2013, ordinary year. 14, ordinary year. 15, ordinary year. 16, ordinary year. Sorry, 16, leap year. Okay. So what is that count? 1 plus 2, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6 plus 2, 8 plus 1, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And 2017 is a ordinary year. So the total will become 
14 odd days is equal to 2 weeks plus 0 odd days. So the count of odd days has become 0. Got it? Which means the next year will be having the same calendar as that of our first year. So 2018 has the same calendar as of 2007. But we do not write 2018. Okay, the, uh, we write only up to 2017. And if the odd days comes to zero, the next year onwards, um, I mean the next year's calendar will be same as our first calendar. That is 2007 calendar. Did you understand? This is how you do it. Count the number of odd days. If it rounds off to zero at any point of time, then the next year will have the same calendar as of the starting year. Understood? I hope so. Moving on, another question, simple question. Same technique. It was a Sunday, January 1, 2006. What was the day of the week of January 1, 2010? I already told you the method. How would you find it out? Jan 1, 2006 was a Sunday. Correct? So Jan 1, 2007 is a Monday. 2007 is not a leap year, so it is a Monday. Jan 1, 2008 is a Tuesday. 2008 is a leap year, yes, but January 1 comes before February 29. Correct. So it is, you don't have to skip a day. It is uh, Tuesday only. Then Jan 1, 2009. This is not Wednesday. We have to sk skip a day again. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday. Why did I skip a day? Because there is a leap year in between. We did not skip a day then. So, although 2009 is not a leap year, we have to skip that day. I mean, that February 29 has been inserted in between. Okay, so we have to skip a day here in this case. Got it? Even though 2009 is not a leap year, because 2008 had one extra day, we had to add that day anyway. Correct? We, have, we can't just skip a day in a year. Correct? That is not possible. So, January 1, 2008 is only Tuesday because the date is between before February 29. But January 1, 2009 comes after February 9, 2000, February 29, 2008. Correct? So we have to add that one extra day. So instead of Wednesday, we got it as Thursday. And January 1, 2010 will be, it is not a leap year, so Friday. Answer is option C, Friday. Understood? Any questions, any doubts? Anyone? I hope not. So that is all about calendars. Now let's go to clocks. Okay. So while starting about clocks, uh, the, the basic things you have to understand is regarding the angle made by the clocks arms. Okay. With the, I uh, know, uh, with each other. Our, our hand and minute hand. What is the angle made between the hour hand and minute hand? That is the, that is usually the question. So before moving on to that, let's understand some very basic facts. It, in 60 minutes, the minute hand gains 57 minutes on the hour hand. Understand this very well. This is a very important concept in this area. In 60 minutes, the minute hand will gain 55 minutes on the hour hand. Okay, why, why is it 55 minutes? Because in one hour, the hour hand also moves 5, five minutes. Correct. For, say if it is 2 o'clock. Uh, one, one, two. So here, two, three. So if it is two o'clock, this would be how the clock looks. Correct. Next, when it is three o'clock, the clock will look like this. Correct. So the hour hand also moves through five minutes. Correct. That is why in one hour, that is in 60 minutes, the minute hand will gain only 55 minutes on the hour hand. Because our hand also, you know, moves five minutes. Got it? Keep this in mind. Be very clear about that. Now, in every hour, both hands coincide once. Every hour. Think about it. Every hour, both of these hands of the clock will coincide each other. Both hour and minute hand will be coinciding together one time per hour. Obvious. Okay, I hope you know that. The hands are in the same straight line when they are coincident or opposite to each other. Yes. If the hands are, you know, 
same in the same they are in the same line if they coincide each other or if they are opposite to each other correct say suppose the if the uh, if the clock hand is showing the time here is the hour hand and here is the minute hand in that case it is a straight line similarly if the hour hand or minute hand is like this exactly opposite making an angle of 180 degree then also it is a straight line so straight lines are possible in two cases one if they are coinciding two if they are exactly opposite to each other okay now when the two hands are in right angles they are 15 minutes space apart i think you know that say at three o'clock the minute hour hand will point to three minute hand will point to one oh sorry uh, point to 12 correct so the angle made here is 90 degrees and this is this distance in minutes is 15 minutes correct now when the hands are in opposite directions they are 30 minutes apart yes when they are in opposite directions the total angle subtended here is 180 degree that is how many minutes 30 minutes okay angle traced by our hand in 12 hours and the angle traced by minute hand in 60 minutes is equal to 360 the entire angle of a clock okay that is the angle traced by the hour hand in 12 hours you know in a 12 hour clock after 12 hours the clock will start again correct so the total angle traced is 360 degree in 12 hours by hour hand for minute hand every 60 minutes it starts again so the angles traced in 60 minutes by a minute hand is equal to 360 degree understood now let's do some questions only five questions and we will finish this soon an accurate clock shows eight in the morning okay eight a.m eight o'clock in the morning through how many degrees will the hour hand rotate when the clock shows two in the afternoon okay this was actually a civil service question this is actually very easy also usually the questions asked at civil service is very easy this year the question on clocks were clocks versus you no know, uh, we can say it is slightly difficult but if you use logic you could have solved it in like seconds okay you i mean the kind of question that came for uh, came from this area you do not have to do anything it was you know you could have imagined it mentally and got the correct answer that was the kind of question nothing too much to calculate but anyway an accurate clock shows eight o'clock in the morning through how many degrees will the hour hand rotate when the clock shows 2 p.m in the afternoon 2 in the afternoon means 2 p.m let's draw a clock although this is not a perfect circle let's assume this to be a circle so 12 1 2 3 9 6 4 5 7 8 10 11 okay so it started with our hand is at 8 correct the hour hand is at 8 8 o'clock means the hour hand is at 8 we are not going to draw the minute hand because in the question it has nothing to do with minute hand okay so 8 o'clock this will be the position of our hand 2 p.m the hour hand will be pointing towards 2 exactly opposite correct so what is this angle 8 and 2 in a clock are exactly opposite so here this is a case where the angle is you know it is a straight line and the arms are in the opposite direction so what is the angle angle subtended is 180 got it this was a civil service question this was asked in ias okay so the angle subtended is one the angle rotated by the hour hand is 180 degree because it's exactly opposite to each other and it is a straight line okay let's try another one this is slightly more difficult find the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand of a clock when time is 325 oh first of all a common mistake that all of you will make i am going to draw that okay so here it is 12 it is 325 correct so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so 325 everybody would draw it, it like this sorry 3 3 and 25 means pointing towards 5 correct 25 means you i know i hope you know that correct 
one points to five minutes, two points to ten minutes, three to fifteen minutes, like that. So this would be how you draw the picture, most of you. But this is wrong. Why? Because at three o'clock the hour hand will point to three. But after that the hour hand also will start to move slightly. It's very bare minimum. You won't notice it too much. But still, as I have mentioned, every one hour the hour hand itself moves by five minutes. Correct. So this hand, when it will not be pointing to three, it will be pointing somewhere in between three and four. Got it? If you could understand this, then this question is nothing. All you have to do is find the remaining angle. Correct? How to do this? In this year's UPSC, the question was like this. Except you did not have to find the angle as such. It was asked, you know, what was the range of that angle? That was the question. So it was easier to find out even without doing it. Okay, UPSC will never ask a very difficult question. Usually the questions are very simple. If the concept of the question is difficult, the calculation will be basically zero, nothing. Very direct, very simple questions. All right. So how to find the answer? Let's start. Okay. Angle traced by our hand in 12 hours is equal to 360 degrees. Correct? Angle traced by the hour hand in 12 hours is 360 degrees. The one full circle. Correct. After that, it starts again. Now, angle traced by it in 3 hours 25 minutes is how much? Okay, our hand. We are de dealing with the hour hand now. We will deal with the second hand, uh, sorry, minute hand later. What is the angle traced by the hour hand in 3 hours and 25 minutes? 3 hours 25 minutes is equal to 3 hours and 25 by 60 hours. Correct, converting into hours. 25 by 60 hours means 5 and uh, 12. Correct. So 3 and 5 by 12, that is 3 into 12, 36 plus 5, 41 is equal to 41 by 12 hours. Okay, so angle traced by our hand in 41 by 12 hours or 3 hours that 25 minutes is equal to how would you find this 360 divided by 12 into 41 by 12 did you understand this angle traced by our hand in 12 hours is 360 so angle traced by our hand in one hour is what 360 divided by 12 okay that is this value so angle traced by our hand in 41 by 12 hours is what angle traced by that in one hour into 41 by 12. So 360 by 12 into 41 by 12. Okay. So when you do this, you will get, uh, actually let's do it. Okay. 3, 30, then uh, this will together 15, 6, 2, 15 uh, goes for how much? 5. So 5 into 41 is 205 by 2 is equal to 102.5 degrees. Okay, so this is the angle traced by the hour hand. Now, what about the minute hand? Angle traced by minute hand in 60 minutes. is equal to how much in 60 minutes how what is the angle traced by the minute hand 360 degrees correct one full rotation now angle traced in angle traced by minute hand in 25 minutes is equal to what it moved it the time is 325 correct so the minute hand has to move 25 minutes okay so what is the uh, uh, you know angle traced Angle traced in one hour 
into angle traced in 25 minutes. Angle traced in 1 minute into 25 minutes. That is equal to 6 into 25 is 150 degrees. Okay, so our hand moved through 102.5 degrees. Minute hand moved through 150 degrees. So what is the angle between the two? Subtract angle required angle. is equal to 150 minus 102.5 is equal to 47.5 degrees. Did you understand? Option A. Clear. This is the concept that you have to keep in mind. In the our hand will always move a bit extra. Okay, that is why we have to find you know, for 3 hours and 25 minutes, we have to find how much the our hand moved. We did not find how much the hour hand moved in 3 hours alone. No. Even for that 25 minutes, the hour hand will slightly move a bit. Okay. So we have to factor in that also. Clear. So that if you understand that concept, this question is nothing. Find the angle moved by the hour hand. Find the angle moved by the minute hand. Subtract it. That's the answer. Okay. So how would you find the angle moved by hour hand and minute hand? Find the angle moved by the hour hand in 1 hour. So if the angle moved by our hand in one hour is this much, then what, how much it moved in X hours. Similarly, if the angle moved by the one, uh, our hand in one minute is this much, sorry, minute hand in one minute is this much, then what is the angle moved by it in X minutes? Got it. I hope you understood. If you have, if you need any more clarity, please ask. Next question. At what time between two and three will be the hands of a clock be together? Okay. So between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m., at what time will the hands be together? So again, usually people blunder here. Or say between 2 p.m. and 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Okay, whatever it is. It is just given 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So one hour anyway. So usually we might think that it would be at what? 2.10. Correct? We all might think that. one. Sorry, here 12, here 6, here uh, 3 and 9. So 1 and 2. So we might think it could be like this. Correct? At 210, they would be overlapping. This is what a novice person think. An amateur might think like that. But that's not the case. Why? Because when it is 210, the minute hand will be pointing to 2 only, at, at 10 only. But our hand would have moved slightly more. Correct? A small fraction movement would be there for the our hand. So at 210, it won't be in straight line. It will be in straight line somewhere in between 210 and 215. We have to find out the exact number. Okay, this year's UPSC question was like this. But in that, one of the options was between 210 and 215. Like that, that, that was the kind of option it was there. So even without doing it, we could have simply gone and, you know, uh, take it. We could simply, you know, mark it, uh, bubble it in the OMR sheet. We did not hand, have to find the exact value because the option was based on a range between 210 and 215. Yeah, fine. That's the answer. No need to calculate or anything. Okay. But let's see how to exactly calculate the time when these hands will meet. Overlap. All right, so how would you do this question? Let's start by uh, writing a statement, okay? At 2 o'clock, the hour hand and minute hand are at 10 minutes distance correct at 2 o'clock at 2 o'clock the minute hand will be here and the hour hand will be pointing exactly to 2 so the difference is 10 minutes so their distance is 10 minutes angular distance correct now to be together The minute hand has to gain 10 minutes over the hour hand, correct? 
This is the angular distance. Correct. So basically the minute hand has to gain 10 minutes over the hour hand. Our hand is also slightly moving. Okay. So even considering that still the minute hand has to, you know, go over 10 minutes over the hour hand. All right. Now, I hope you remember this first thing that I have taught you. In 60 minutes, the minute hand gains 55 minutes over the hour hand. Okay. Based on that. So in 60 minutes, a uh, uh, minute hand gains 55 minutes over the hour hand. Okay, based on that. Okay, so in 10 minutes, so 10 minutes will be, sorry, a slight issue with this writing. Okay, uh, I'm trying to put this into statement so that you could understand it better. Okay, so 10 minutes will be gained in how much time? 55 minutes are gained in 60 minutes. Correct. So 10 minutes would be gained in 60 by 55 into 10. Correct. Simple multiplication is equal to 10 and 10 by 11 minutes. Okay, you multiply this and cancel all things and you will get it. Uh, 11, 12, 120 divided by 11 is 10 and 10 by 11. All right, therefore, the hands will coincide at 10, 10 by 11 minutes past Understood? That is why I told you that first statement is very, very important. In 60 minutes, in one hour, the minute hand will gain 55 minutes over the hour hand. Which means 55 minutes are gained in 60 minutes. Correct? The minute hand gains 55 minutes in 60 minutes. So, 10 minutes will be gained by how much time? 60 by 55 into 10. So, this much minute. So, the hands will coincide in this time. That is 10 and 10 by 11 minutes after 2 o'clock. I know that this question is slightly confusing to you. You may not have understood it at the moment, but go through this once again and try doing more of similar questions so that you can get it, get a hand of it. Okay. Now I think this is the last question. Okay. Couple more questions, but the last question is nothing. There is nothing to do in that question. So one question more uh, with some problem solving. A clock is set right at 8 p.m. Sorry, 8 a.m. Okay, at 8 a.m. On, on a fine day, the clock is in the correct time. Exactly correct time. Okay, sorry. Okay. The clock gains 10 minutes in 24 hours. In 24 hours, the clock is gaining 10 minutes. So, the clock is a bit fast. Okay, it doesn't show the correct time. It is a bit fast. So, the it was set correct in 8 a.m. But in 24 hours, it went 10 minutes too fast. What will be the true time when the clock indicates 1 p.m. on the following day? The next day, when it shows 1 p.m., what exactly is the correct time? I mean, if it is showing 1 p.m., it is there is slight, you know, extra time. Correct. The clock is a bit too fast. So, what is the actual time? That is the question. How would you find it? Find find this out. Let's start. What is the total time difference between 8 a.m. today and 1 p.m. tomorrow? Time from 8 a.m. on day on a day to 1 p.m. next day is equal to how many hours? 8 a.m. to next day, 8 a.m. 12 uh, 24 hours. Then uh, to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That is one. So totally, how many hours? 29 hours. Correct. Number of hours between 8 a.m. today and 1 p.m. tomorrow is 29 hours. Now, 24 hours 
टेन मिनिट्स ऑफ दिस क्लॉक इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स ऑफ करेक्ट टाइम करेक्ट क्लॉक करेक्ट दुक एट द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट द क्लॉक गेन्स टेन मिनिट्स इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स सो एवरी ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स द क्लॉक इज एक्स्ट्रा बाई टेन मिनिट्स करेक्ट सो दिस क्लॉक गोज ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स टेन मिनिट्स फॉर एवरी ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स सो ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स टेन मिनिट्स ऑफ दिस क्लॉक इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स ऑफ द करेक्ट क्लॉक करेक्ट अंडरस्टूड नाउ वी कैन कन्वर्ट दिस इन टू यू नो फ्रैक्शन सो ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स एंड टेन बाई सिक्सटी आवर्स ओके दिस इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फाइव बाई सिक्स आवर्स ऑफ दिस क्लॉक इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स ऑफ करेक्ट क्लॉक converting it into a fraction you know converting it into hours okay instead of hours and minutes we are converting the whole thing into hours 145 by 6 hours is equal to uh, of this clock is equal to 24 hours of the correct clock therefore 29 hours of this clock that is what we have to find is equal to how much 24 into 6 by 145 into 29 hours That is twenty five. Sorry, twenty four divided by one forty five by six. That is into six by one forty five. You know, when you divide by a fraction, it will become you know uh, reciprocal in multiplication. Correct. So twenty four by six one forty five by six is equal to twenty four into six by one forty five into twenty nine hours. Correct. So when you solve this, you would get this is five and twenty four into six. Twenty-four into five is one twenty, so one forty-four divided by five. Okay, so this is equal to when you solve this, you can get twenty-eight hours and forty-eight minutes. Okay, simple calculation: one forty-four divided by five. Two five are ten. Remaining is four. Uh, the next four comes down. Eight five are forty. Remaining is four. So twenty-eight hours. Then. This is remaining, correct? Four by five, four twenty-eight and four by five hours. Okay, what is four by five hours? Four by five hours is forty-eight minutes. Multiply it by twelve. Okay, I hope you know that four by five hours equal to what? Four into sixty. Make the denominator. Uh, uh, um, sorry, um, make the denominator sixty. That's what you have to do. So uh, five into what is sixty? Five into twelve is sixty, correct? So you have to multiply the numerator also by the same value. So four into twelve, forty-eight. So forty-eight by sixty. So forty-eight minutes. So twenty-eight hours, forty-eight minutes. Correct. This is the actual time. Go on. When this clock goes twenty-nine hours, the uh, the correct clock only clo goes for twenty-eight hours, forty-eight minutes. So what is the actual time? From eight a.m. On day one, count twenty-eight hours, forty-eight minutes. So, what would be the value? The actual time would be what? Twelve forty-eight p.m. next day. Okay, it won't be one p.m. This clock will be showing one p.m., but the actual time will be twelve forty-eight p.m. Did you get? Did you get how I did this? First of all, find the number of hours between the two times given from the correct time to the next uh, the, to the time we have to calculate. Okay, so at eight a.m. the clock is correct. So time from eight a.m. on first day to one p.m. next day. Total hours is equal to twenty nine hours. Okay, so this clock you know gains ten minutes every twenty four hours. So twenty four hours ten minutes of this clock is equal to twenty four hours of the correct clock. Correct. So from that we can find out twenty nine hours of this clock is equal to how much of the correct clock. Find it out and add that value to eight a.m. and you can get the correct answer. Slightly difficult, correct? But UPSC do not ask these kinds of difficult questions. Don't worry about it. Okay. So another very easy question, but I I I am I am giving you these questions because in case if such questions come, you should not be short handed. 
okay you should have all your ammunitions ready to face this that is why i taught you how to do this do similar questions from online and you can get it more easy okay last question how many times are the hands of a clock at right angles in a day this was a civil service question okay this question was asked in a, in civil service some time ago uh, how many times are the hands of a clock at right angles in a day right angles means 90 degree okay like for example three o'clock at three o'clock it will be exactly 90 degree so similar nine o'clock it will be 90 degree correct so how many times are the hands of a clock at right angles in a day you can do this okay you can actually you know solve it using all the angles and degrees and all and that would take a lot of time and if i try to explain it all together with everything that i have taught you today you would get totally confused okay so you don't we, we don't have to go there let that be any, uh, let the proof be as such forget it take this note and learn it in 12 hours the hands of a clock are at right angles 22 times okay every 12 hours in a, in one full 12 hours okay the hands of a clock are in right angles 22 times got it so in a day how many hours are there they are asking in a day in a day there are 24 hours correct so 12 hours it it happens 22 times so in 24 hours it happens for 22 into 2 that is 44 times answer is c you, you keep this in mind okay forget about the proof of the other thing okay i can prove uh, uh, using all the steps i can actually prove that to, in 12 hours it happens 22 times but if i do the proof here you i mean it will simply get even more confused for you so let that be there uh if you want if you are curious i mean uh, i will share how to do it in the telegram channel later uh or maybe in a future class we will do it but for now just understand this in every 12 hours the clock the hands of the clock will be at right angles 22 times so based based on that we can extrapolate in 24 hours it will be 44 times okay so that's it we have managed to reach the end of today's session some questions are slightly tricky but others are very easy calendar questions are very simple and there is nothing there in clock i think there was a couple of questions which could be confusing for you but don't worry about it uh, take a break go and come back and look at this once again and you will understand definitely okay so please make sure to like this video subscribe to my channel and share with your friends and we will meet again at 8 pm today for our environment lecture until then see you